I'll be reading A Little Prairie House, and I'm Aaliyah. I was in, I'm in Mr. Supper's class 117. A Little Prairie House by Laura Ingalls Wilder, illustrated by Renee Gelfman. Once upon a time, a little girl named Laura traveled in a covered wagon across the giant prairie. She traveled with her pa, her ma, her big sister, Mary, her little sister, Carrie, and their good old bulldog, Jack. They were searching for the perfect place to build themselves a little house. One day after the little family had been traveling across the prairie for a long time, Laura and Mary woke up early than the sun. They ate their breakfast of cornmeal, mush, and, and hurried to help Ma wash the dishes. Pa was loading everything into the wagon. When the sun rose, they were diving, driving across the prairie. There was no road to drive on, so Pat and Patty, the two gentle mustangs, wet, wait, waited through the grasses. Later that morning, Pa said, Woohoo! The wagon stopped. Here we are. He said, right here, we'll build our house. Laura and Mary jumped to the ground. All around them, there was nothing but prairie. Right away, Pa and Ma began to unload the wagon. They took everything out and piled it on the ground. While Laura, Mary, and Jack watched then Paul drove the wagon down into the prairie out of sight to get a load of logs from the creek bottom. Laura was a little frightened to be left on the prairie without the wagon. She wanted to hide in the tall grass like a little prairie chicken, but instead the and is, but instead, she helped Ma with, while Mary sat on the grass and minded baby Carrie. Soon, Pa came back with a load of logs for days and days. Pa kept hauling logs. He made two piles of them, one for the house and one for the stable. When he had enough logs, it was time to build. Paul began the house first. All by himself, Paul built the walls of the house, three logs high, and then Ma helped him log by log. Paul and Ma built the walls higher and higher. Soon Laura couldn't climb over them anymore. Then one day Paul was off hunting and he came home whistling merrily. Good news, he shouted. Pa had met a neighbor on the other side of the creek. His name was Mr. Edwards. And he was going to help Pa finish building the house. Then Pa would help Mr. Edwards build his house. Early the next morning, Mr. Edwards came. He was lean and tall. Then he bowed to Ma politely. He told Laura he was a wild cat from Tennessee and he could spit farther than Laura had ever imagined anyone could spit. Laura tried and tried, but she would never spit so far or so well as Mr. Edwards. But Mr. Edwards was a fast worker and one day, he and Pa built the walls of the little house as fast, as high as Pa wanted, wanted them. They sang while they worked and worked.
sword and their axes made the chips fly. They cut a tall hole for the door and square holes for the windows. Laura couldn't wait to see the inside of the house and as soon as the tall hole was cut, she ran inside. Strips of sunlight came through the cracks in the top and the walls and went all across Laura's hands and arms and feet. At the end of the day, Mr. Edwards said he would go home, but Paul and Ma said he must stay to supper. Ma had made stew, jackrabbit, and steamed hot thick cornbread with molasses. Mr. Edwards said he surely did appreciate the supper. Then uh, Pa took out his fiddle and began to sing. Suddenly Mr. Edwards jumped up and began to dance. He danced like a jumping jack in the moonlight. While Pa's fiddle kept on, kept on rolling and Laura's and Mary's hands were clapping together. Pa played and played, and Mr. Edwards danced and danced. Finally, Mr. Edwards said he must go. Play me down the road, he said. So Pa played, and Pa and Lori and Mr. Edwards sang with all their might until Lori couldn't hear Mr. Edwards anymore. Only the wind rustled in the prairie grasses, and the big yellow moon sailed high over the new little house on the prairie.